just really going to talk about what your sort of on the ground experience is going to be like at the festival. And I ha I'm going to be mentioning a lot of details, but don't worry because I'm going to hand it out to you later. Um, and I also have a handy festival sort of uh, FYI map and uh, program cheat sheet for you as well. Um, so I'm going to start off just by speaking a little bit to our guest relations office. I don't know how many of you have already started dealing with them directly, um, but the guest relations office during the festival is located at the Hyatt Regency. So I'm sure you've heard that our sort of two headquarters during the festival are this building where all of our press activities are focused and next door where all of the programming and industry activities are focused. Um, so you'll want to go and pick up your uh, package, which will include your guest pass along with, with uh, some general festival information um, from the Grow Desk. And that's in the King Ballroom at the Hyatt Regency. And so the staff there is available throughout the festival for questions about hotel, flight, airport, ground transport transportation, bookings, and that kind of thing, and any changes you might need to make. Um, also, uh, if applicable, that's where you would go to get your guest reimbursement. Um, and there is mailboxes there for you as well. So do you need to leave a message for another guest or a fellow filmmaker or have people leave invites for you there, for example? Um, and they can also, if you're not from around here, they can make some recommendations about stuff to do in the neighborhood, et cetera. Um, so they open at the hotel as of Wednesday the 7th, which is the day before the festival begins, and they stay open until the final Saturday. Um, the guest pass that you'll receive through there gives you access to certain things. So you get, um, I, should, I should start off by saying to your own screenings, you'll get two tickets to each of the first two public screenings, which you will get when you check in there. Um, but then your pass also lets you pull up to six public screenings, regular or premium, uh, from your pass. A premium screening we define as essentially a red carpet event. So those are spread across different venues of the festival. Nay, all of the galas are considered premium as well as many of the special presentations at the Elgin, our new venue, the Princess of Wales, um, the Isabel Bader, the Ryerson, and a couple in our own building, uh, Tiff Bell Lightbox. Um, you can also, with your pass, uh, get access to gala screenings on a rush basis um, and additional beyond the six public um, regular and premium screenings on a rush basis. And for those of you that are new to the festival, we sort of have this rush lineup culture for all of the screenings. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but essentially um, I think it's, an, it's a good access point to the festival for those people who can't navigate the ticket process. So there's lots of lines for people that are just waiting for last minute tickets and your pass will allow you to get in for free to those tickets if you want to rush the film. Um, okay, and then you also get access to press and industry screenings, which are on a first-come, first-served basis. Priority press screenings, we always have a few of those during the festival. Um, and industry programming events, which I'm sure that Christoph has already spoken to you all about. Um, and then just access to the different spaces at the Hyatt, like the sales and industry office and the filmmaker's lounge. Um, the programming office uh, will be attached to the filmmaker's lounge this year. So that's where Steve and Magalie and the whole Canadian programming crew, as well as all the international programmers and myself will be located during the festival if you have questions. Um, okay, so where to get your tickets? You can get them at the industry box office at the Hyatt Regency, which is on the lower conference level. You can also get them at venue box offices um, up to an hour before the first screening of the day at a given venue. Um, and then of course, if you're rushing something, you can get them um, as you are led into the screening. Okay. Now for your own screenings. Um, so just to let you know, each film at the festival is given a minimum of two public screenings and one press and industry screening. And you can have up to three public screenings and two press and industry screenings. And that's dependent on your Canadian distribution status and your premiere status. Um, we actually just locked the schedule overnight last night. Um, so notifications will be sent out to everybody tomorrow morning. Um, and the people that normally get that information are your distributor, your sales agent, or your producer, um, and in some cases the filmmakers themselves will be sent it directly. Um, so in case you don't get it, you should just know who to contact for that information. Um, in terms of when you're actually here for your screenings, we request that filmmakers attend all of the screenings of their film to do an introduction and a Q&A session for when they're here. Um, and if you're not here for the duration, if you have a third public screening, sometimes it can end up being spread out across the 11 days. We request that you do attend at least the first two. Um, and we ask that you arrive 30 minutes in advance of the start time. And if you are going to stay for the film, um, you have the tickets that you'll be given uh, through the guest relations office and occasionally the uh, companies associated with your film might have additional allotments as well. So you're welcome to stay for the screening if you'd like. And if not, uh, the 
the venue representative there will let you know what time you need to come back for your Q&A. So when you get there, it's just an important tip. Just uh, look for somebody with a headset on and they'll be able to answer all your questions about where you need to go. I mean, a lot of our venues have um, multiple screens in them, so they can be a little bit hard to navigate with all the crowds and everything happening during the festival. So find somebody with a headset and ask for the uh, theater pal. Uh, the pal is somebody that liaises with the programming department on a regular basis and they'll know who's there going to meet you there to do your introduction, whether it's um, Steve or another member of the programming department, and they're the ones that will let you know when to come back if you're not going to sit for the screening. Um, Oftentimes, even if you're not going to sit, people want to stay for the first few minutes to just tech, check out the sort of technical quality of the film. Um, we totally encourage that. That's absolutely fine. Um, but what you cannot do is go up to our projection booth. <laughs> so if you do have a problem with the way the film's being projected, we just ask that you notify one of the reps and they will go and get the technical rep for you and then you can deal with the problem. Um, in terms of how the actual introductions go, a member of the programming staff will introduce the filmmaker, and then if you have cast in attendance with you, um, we would like you to introduce your cast. Um, in the case of some of the shorts programs, there isn't always time to bring up the cast, because there's lots of you in a given program, um, but that's generally how we like to make it work. And also for the shorts programs, um, I'm sure you've already been told this already, but I can maybe reiterate, is that the intro happens before all of them, and the Q&A happens at the end of all of the screenings, um, so there isn't, you know, stop it, stopping in between. Um, what else can I tell you? You're going to bring your cast on stage. Um, you can't enter the production booth. <laughs> um, and... Uh, Yes, it is not recommended that you attend the press and industry screenings of your film. Oftentimes, you'll get the schedule and you'll see, you know, all five screenings or all three screenings of your film. But the press and industry screenings, you know, we don't we don't recommend that filmmakers attend those. Um, n why? Um, yeah, industry often come and go from screenings. Um, and that's not necessarily a reflection on the film itself, just that they're trying to cover off as much as they possibly can. And we just, you know, it might not necessarily be the best experience, you know, for the filmmaker, um, even if they have very legitimate reasons for doing that. Um, so it's just, it's just more of a business um, atmosphere as opposed to the audience atmosphere at the public screenings. And there's no formal introduction or, or you know, any presentation of the filmmaker at those screenings. Um, so that's what I can say about that. Um, and somebody had a question before I got here about how to get your film into the uh, P&I screening library. That's something that's dealt with when your invitation form is sent to either yourself or the producer or the distributor or sales agent, and they have the option of uh, providing screeners to us to have in the library. And um, a lot of the people that go to library are press who can't make it to the press and industry screenings, um, but also other festival programmers from other festivals. Our, our, um, sort of that's one of our biggest uptakes of who actually comes to the PNI library. So if you, you know, if that's important to you, I think I would just recommend that you message that to whoever is sort of filling out that information for you because they have the option to not supply us with anything or to supply us with something there and then also something that we can keep in our own film reference library later on, which is always helpful to the programming staff at TIFF if that happens. Um, just the one other thing I'll mention is there's a few programming related events that we run every year at the festival. Um, so all filmmakers are invited to a festival filmmakers brunch on Saturday the 10th. Um, this year that's going to be at the Thompson Hotel. Um, it's at 10.30 in the morning, but you'll get all of the details later on. Um, and then also uh, all of the programmers at the festival host filmmaker dinners throughout, so I'm sure that you'll be contacted about that from whoever your programmer is. So... That's kind of all I have for how things operate on the ground, but I'm happy to answer any questions, and I will hand out my, my little how-to sheet as well as my festival pamphlet cheat sheet. <laughs>